Welcome to the FNO InsureTech Podcast, a place where movers and shakers from all points within the insurance ecosystem gather and discuss all things InsureTech. We talk about how technology and innovation are affecting and driving change in the industry. Here are your hosts, Lee Boyd and Rob Beller. Hey, podcast world. Welcome. You are welcome. Shalom. Shalom. Welcome. That was nice. Shalom, huh? huh? Yeah. Because we have we have kind of a we have an Israeli connection. Uh, yeah, yeah. On this we podcast do. today, is that fair to say? It's fair to say. I did use the word Israel at one point today. Did you? And I, I think our our guest did also. It did, but not on not on the podcast. But yeah. Uh, well, okay. She used the word Tel Aviv. She did. You're absolutely right. She used the word Tel Aviv. That's two words, I think. I think it's a hyphen. I, I'm not exactly sure. And anyway, we'll have to get a ruling on that <clears throat> before, before before our next episode. Welcome, what everybody. What a great one. Welcome, everybody, to a um, really interesting, really invigorating episode of FNO InsureTech. That's right. Your favorite podcast. Move yeah. over, Joe Rogan. Bye-bye. Move over, Megan. Yeah, who? this is Megan, the the Duchess of Sussex, or whatever really? her title is. Yeah, she has here, a podcast. She has she has the number one podcast in the world. I okay, I live under rock because I don't. Well, listen. that's true. <laughs> the boring part. Well, interesting to me, but not to others. We're we're a top rated podcast. We are. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so true. We are oh, top rated. Oh my goodness. Look, we're a niche podcast. Let's be honest. Right. But we're top rated in our niche. We're top rated in our niche. And I'm very proud of that and very proud to present the first podcast done by anybody at Fairmatic yes. since they debuted as, as a company that's been secretly operating for a number of years, and they came out into full view, and we have their president of insurance with us today, the one, the only. Jamie Trish. Jamie Trish. What an exciting day to have her on. She is a big deal, and we're going to get to talk about that, but this person knows insurance. I mean, knows all about it, and she is working at this really cool startup, I guess you would say, company that uses that they uses telematic data to sell insurance. This is a kind of a interesting continuation to an episode we did a long time ago with one of our favorite guests. Yeah. Jonathan Matus. Jonathan Matus. Yeah. And Jonathan is the CEO and co-founder of Zendrive. And he was really the first telematic um, auto data uh, play that we'd had on the podcast, right? And it was a fascinating, fascinating episode. Yeah, you got to go back and listen to that one. If you haven't, you got to go back and yeah, listen. Yeah, it, it'd be a good prep for this one. And what we didn't know at that time is that Jonathan was working on this very project and right. taking that know-how and that ability and what is now several hundred billion miles of driving data. That's and capitalizing on it in the name of Fairmatic. This is one of those that I don't want to give too much away, and I want Jamie to tell us all about it. So why don't we just jump on in? Without further ado, here's our interview with President of Insurance for Fairmatic, Jamie Trish. Hey, everybody. We are here with our very special guest, who is actually a member of a team that includes another very special guest, that's right. One of our all-time favorite guests, Jonathan Matus. He is. Shout out to Jonathan. Yeah. But today, we're going to one-up that by bringing in the president of a stealth company, a company that's been in stealth mode, right, Jamie? That's right. I think we're officially de-stealthed, but we had been in stealth mode until very recently. We have Jamie Trish with us. 
the president of? I'm the president of insurance at Fairmatic. President of insurance at Fairmatic. Yes. Wow. That sounds like a big title. It does. You're the insurance person in the organization. I am one of many wonderful insurance people in the organization. We got a great team. One thing I'll say uh, sort of upfront about Fairmatic, and I know we'll talk a lot about what we do, but sort of what drew me to the company is is really, I think, we're the coming together of insurance and tech. And so I might be the president of insurance, but I feel very much in partner with the technology people to bring a different way of thinking about commercial auto. How cool. neat. Cool. Let's start by talking a little bit about the history because not every company is in stealth mode, but I guess, first of all, why did you have to do that? And then tell us a little bit about Fairmatic. Sure. So Fairmatic was really probably initially started, you could say, in back in 2017. So a number of years ago, it was incubated or as a part of ZenDrive. And the idea there was Jonathan recognized that what he had with ZenDrive was an enormous amount of driving data that could really, really accurately predict the likelihood of insurance losses on the road. And so he said, hey, there's a a huge opportunity here. Let me take some time and see if this is something we can make work. And so slowly but surely, with no pressure of growing, selling, or 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 doing anything grand, um, he and a, a small team within ZenDrive took the time to um, build a predictive model and test it in the real world um, over a five-year period or four-year period while we were in stealth mode um, and really be able to prove out that the, the model um, worked uh, in the real world. So that's the... We really... We really, um, here at Fairmatic, I think Jonathan's vision always was that we want to do something new and different, but we want to do something new and different that can sort of last. And so really wanted to take the time to, to watch the results come in, let them play out, and ensure that we had something that was really different. Before we ask you what's new and different, which is a very intriguing proposition, tell us a little bit about ZenDrive and what ZenDrive does for you guys or how it ties together? So ZenDrive is, I think your guests would be best served by going and digging up uh, your podcast with Jonathan to hear all of the wonderful stories of of ZenDrive and how it was founded. It's really an inspirational story about Jonathan's career, you know, in the building mobile tech and, and really recognizing the unintended consequences of mobile technology on road safety and then building a company in ZenDrive drive with a mission to, to make roads safer. Um, and so that's, a I think, a, a truly inspirational story worth, worth ex- exploring on its own. But if you yeah. think about our strategic partnership with ZenDrive, we have been spun out of ZenDrive, so we're totally an independent company. Um, but we partner with them with respect to their driving data and their technology sort of as a, a service provider. So what's new and different? Yeah. So what's new and different about Fairmatic? If you were to, to say, okay, what's Fairmatic, you could call us a commercial auto MGA, and that would be sort of accurate. But I think we're really much more than that. So if you think about our product, we're an unconventional, I think, more impact-driven alternative to traditional commercial auto insurance. So we okay. have proprietary pricing models that were built on a couple hundred billion miles of driving data. And what that means is with our technology, we are able to reward our safest driving customers with lower insurance premiums. So our Fairmatic's commercial auto customers sort of get fairness, hence the name Fairmatic, along with control over their costs that they can't get from any other commercial auto provider. And so whenever you're writing these policies, I assume you're selling them a policy, but if they drive good, that's when the discounts come or do you discount it up front based on some other knowledge? Yeah, no, the first way you spoke about that okay. is, is right, but there's a couple couple mechanisms at work. So every commercial auto insurance company is trying to assess risk and yeah. sort of price fleets as much as they can to the risk. So people are doing the best they can to guess what the risk is going to be. 
But our technology is different because it captures driving data that gives us more accurate and real-time insights into the actual risk as the customer, our customers are driving. But there's really two mechanisms that it works. First, we can immediately reward our safest driving fleets with lower premiums. So you don't have to wait a year at renewal to get a new oh, discount. Oh, wow. So we quickly, at like very quick feedback you see in your premiums, safer driving means lower premiums. But second, we also, because we give feedback um, to fleet managers about how their drivers are performing on the road, even those customers that aren't like don't join us as the best drivers, get the information and insights that they need to coach their drivers um, to improve on the road. So the customers win because they either are already driving really well and get uh, immediate discounts or they get the information they need to improve their driving and then in turn lower their insurance premium. So it's a real, I think, win-win here for the customers who you know get more accurate, lower premiums. Um, and then fair Firmatic, where you know we're able to profitably grow by incentivizing safe driving. I think if you look at those two combined and go back to the Zen Drive mission, um, yeah. we at Firmatic also have the shared uh, mission with Zen Drive, which is to make roads safer. And so I think what I especially connected to at Firmatic is it's not just better for fleets or customers and better for the insurance company. It's also better for society because sort of when you're driving on the Firmatic product, we are, you know, one mile at a time making roads safer for everybody. Is that something that's talked about at the company? Is that mission statement discussed and everybody who worked there, are they aware of that is what you're trying to do? So I think one of the one of the reasons that I made the the switch from sort of big company to startup was because of how connected I personally felt to the mission and how connected the folks I met with at Fairmatic feel, you know, in terms of the mission. So yeah, it definitely is something that we think and talk about. I one of my favorite things I've done at Fairmatic is um, to to work with Jonathan and the leadership team to establish our company values, oh, um, and great. we take those very very seriously and they're they're tied to our mission and how we want to approach our business and it's something I think you see and feel around the company every day. That is really good to hear. I, I like hearing that. So tell us about the actual pro is there a product in the vehicle or does it use mobile phones? How do you get this information once a policy is sold? So once a, a policy is sold, we onboard our customers to our technology, which does utilize, we're pretty flexible actually. So we can do mobile technology, which is obviously ubiquitous here. Um, we can do a device in the car. Um, and I think one of the powers of our, our approach is that we don't have just one way of getting at the data, mm -hmm. but through those various um, versions of our technology, we're able to capture the, the driving data that we need um, to run our pricing models and provide those driving insights back to the fleet manager. Since you're riding a particular fleet, are they anonymized? I know that in the big picture of, like you said, a couple billion a couple hundred billion miles, that, that's anonymized data. What about this? I, I would think is not, correct? So it depends on, I'm not sure, like when you think about anonymized, when we think about sort of an individual customer. So let's say we have, you know, a, a customer, Jamie's delivery company that we insure. Um, in order for us to allow that customer to provide the coaching and insights that they need for their drivers, we do need to give that customer information about what opportunities each driver has sure. for improvement. So does this driver need to you know, speed less um, or, you know, undertake some different change. But that being said, we take privacy extremely seriously. So while we give feedback about driving behavior so that it can be managed outside of giving that directly back to the customer, we don't, you know, it's anonymized beyond that. Okay. But they have to be able to, I mean, that's part of the point here is by being able to communicate behavior to somebody that can influence it to change. Absolutely. It's part of the value proposition that you have to know what you have to improve in order to be able to improve it. And we have customers that want to, to, to buy from us are the ones that 
want to get the benefit of being able to control their insurance costs. And um, like I said, we take you know privacy very seriously and we're, we're able to partner with them to get them the information that they need, but to protect the privacy of their staff. Are you insuring small fleets like mom and pop type places or are you doing national? And, and if so, what, what states are you in? So we can write in every state. Um, we, you know, are, are new and small and growing. Um, okay. I think one of the sort of best things about our product is that because it's based on actual driving behavior, it really could be fit anywhere. Um, So it could fit. It's not really good for one type of fleet or one industry or one state. It really sort of gets rid of all of the noise and gets down to brass tacks about uh, (laughs) this is how you drive and how you drive is going to sort of influence significantly your claim experience. So the beauty of the product is that it really um, it really can apply in any situation. We have sort of as a company started out more or in the middle market type space, um, but have been moving down market um, and continue to expand the industries that we write with. Why start with commercial versus personal lines? Why did y'all decide to start on the commercial side? You know, back when when Fairmatic started, and you know, if you look at sort of my my most recent experience before joining Fairmatic. I knew from that and and Jonathan recognized that the commercial auto industry has been facing some significant challenges. So if you look over, you know, the past decade or so, there's been $20 billion in underwriting losses. And so there's high limits in commercial auto that are very sensitive to inflationary pressures. There's long development tails so that it can take time for, you know, insurance companies to get their arms wrapped around um, exposures. And, you know, the biggest carriers in the industry know this, but they've been unable to fix it. So there's, you know, regulatory constraints, cultural constraints, there's, you know, a fear of disruption of a book. And so there's a huge problem to be solved in the commercial auto industry. And I think Fairmatic is well positioned to, to, to work on that on that problem. So what you're looking for, for your customers, for the insureds, are commercial fleets or companies that have commercial vehicles that are willing to get involved. They want to play a part in what happens here. Because if they don't get involved, then they're losing the benefit. I think that's exactly right. So I think a customer will come to Fairmatic. So if you if you sort of think about how the industry is working today, there's been, because of the challenges I outlined, sort of substantial rate increases across the board. So any one fleet sort of both the good and the bad is likely to have seen multiple rate increases over the last several years. And so if you're a business owner, um, I don't think you sort of necessarily wake up one day and say, I'm, you know, I want to think about my commercial auto (laughs) premium, but what you do, you know, what you, when you experience ongoing sort of rate increases like that, you start to think, Hey, why is this happening? What can I do about it? And so I think the, the, what our product customers that are attracted to our product are ones that, you know, are driving better than their insurance company that, that, you know, thinks they are, mm-hmm. um, or ones that are willing to engage and really manage the, the driving behavior to, to take that control over their insurance costs um, and really enable their businesses by reducing their insurance premiums. So how does the feedback loop work? Because I assume there's a feedback loop, right? So your system is sending information to the insured and saying, like these a report vehicles, card. yeah, a report card on here's your 37 vehicles, here's your 37 report cards or 37 drivers, here's your 37 report cards. And 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 that data is probably going on out however they customize for it to come to them, however they want it. Yeah, you got it. So we um, once our technology is installed, we're able to provide real time feedback to our customers, our fleet managers. Most of them interact with our uh, dashboard, which is a, a you know system that they can log into and get sort of insights served up about their individual drivers. And it is a report card. There's a score. The score is not just a, a number. So, uh, Rob, I'm sure you'd get an A. Oh, <laughs> but it, I would not. But if you didn't, I would not. if you didn't, then it's not just a, a, a number. It's a you know guidance around what it is that is is, you know, you have in terms of opportunities for improvement so that it's really easily actionable um, so that, you know, 
you can go say, hey, Rob, when you're driving to that customer every day, you tend to speed on this part of the, the trip and you gotta, uh, you gotta improve your driving. Uh, and it is immediately actionable for the driver to then go mm-hmm. and improve their, their driving behavior. And the follow-up is really easy too f- for the management to say, okay, let's see how you've done. It absolutely, like it's, we provide the management sort of information about the drivers uh, and then they're able to see how their drivers are performing over time. So who's improving and who's not improving. And then I think, you know, importantly, we haven't yet um, sort of made the point that not only is it that they're able to see how a driver performs over time, they're able to then tie that performance back to their insurance premiums. So they can see as Rob gets better driving, they're, when they're going to pay less in, in insurance premium. Now, now, so I'm interesting in when it's originally bound, when it's a new policy, how do you rate it? How do you underwrite it originally? Where does that data come from? Yeah, so we, um, you know, are competing against more traditional carriers, um, and so we have to package our product and offering in a way that an agent and broker and customer um, can understand. And so you can imagine we sort of take the information that we have that's about the customer, about their fleet, about where they're driving, about their exposure, and and offer them sort of what we would call here's what your estimated price is going to be based on average driving behavior. And then we're allowed, like what we enable them to see is if you drive better than that, then you could save money. Um, and then if you drive worse than that, you'll you'll wind up um, paying additional insurance premium above the estimate. So we're able to give them, telegraph for them, here's what your experience with Fairmatic can look like. And how, I'm wondering how the drivers are responding. I mean, are the drivers saying, wow, this is great that you're <laughs> That you're that you're spying on me, so to speak, or that you know what I'm up to, or are they? Do they push back? Or I mean, what what's the feedback there? So we've had tens of thousands of drivers come through the platform, um, and I think you know, with having gone through that many drivers, there's going to be, of course, like a range of of feedback. Um, there are you know, obviously drivers that would prefer not to get, not to get monitored. Um, but I think what we've seen with our, with our customers by and large is that this becomes a part of sort of how they manage their business and it doesn't feel like necessarily something different. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, the, the fleets are able to utilize the feedback that they get from our product to help drivers, like reward drivers that are, you know, yeah. already driving well and saying, hey, good job, Rob. Mm-hmm. Um, and that where there's opportunity for improvement, they're able to provide specific coaching. So there's going to be always an element of folks out there that feel like big brother, or I, you know, I don't want to get tracked. Um, but, you know, by and large, we've had, you know, enough of the market and enough customers come through um, that see the value in our product and technology um, and understand how we're using the data uh, in a way that's specific to their commercial auto premium and nothing else um, and are really on board with what the value is that we bring. I would think that very few drivers out there are not used or, or I mean, they, are, they are used to some technology tracking them, right? I don't know of very many fleet operators out there who don't have something in their car that reports back to home base to let them know where they are, have they made their delivery, have they not. So I, I bet they're used to it. And plus it's up to the it's up to the owners, you know, what they do with their savings, right? No one's stopping them from actually re, you know, maybe maybe giving a bonus Rewarding, to somebody or right. or, or a Christmas mm-hmm. gift, right? To say, hey, you are the best driver this year. You save the most. My my question now is is it working? Are we seeing a trend through Fairmatic? Are we seeing a trend of people saving money or people becoming better drivers? I think we can sort of look, I think, in two in two ways at that. One, at our sort of macro experience overall. So like I said, we've been in, in market for a couple of years and are showing strong sort of portfolio underwriting results, really best in class type type underwriting results. So from a portfolio perspective, um, we've definitely been able to prove out that the model works sort of in the real world um, with a, a volume of drivers and customers. When you look at an individual risk sort of result, I think one of the things that is just like really, really fun (laughs) to see is, you know, we've had 
We've had customers come to Fairmatic because they really believe that they're better drivers than their insurance company is giving them credit for. And out of the gate, they're immediately saving money. Oh, um, wow. And so we don't necessarily see improvement because they were already good. To they were already good. With. But that, I think, is a, it, it's still a wonderful story. Um, and then we've had you know fleets come on that you know, had an opportunity for improvement. Their driving score was, you know, worse than average. And we have seen, um, you know, some great customer success stories where they've either, you know, managed the drivers, um, you know, in terms of who they're hiring and and how they monitor and use driving and feedback, um, or they've enabled individual coaching to help individual drivers get better through rewards or, or management. And so we've got some great stories and, you know, we've got, customers that have been around for, you know, four years with us. And it's because they were able to drive down um, their insurance premiums with us because of the improvement and then sort of want to retain the benefits and continue to have access to our technology that allows them to manage their fleet in a way that they can control their insurance costs. They must love you guys. I think for a for a commercial auto insurance. Yeah, I mean, not the sexiest category out there. Right? Last time I checked, nobody woke up and uh, and and said that out loud. But yes, I think I think that our our customers, you know, see a lot of value for us. And there are customers out there that have come and left because they have seen um, you know in, increase in insurance premiums because they haven't driven well and they are not yeah. interested in um, in in managing that in mm-hmm. putting the effort. Mm-hmm. And to take control. So it's, it's not going to be a hundred percent for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, you know, something they knew coming that's in. That's okay. You don't want those. We don't want them. Yeah. We definitely want people who want to engage, um, and, and, and sort of have this win-win, um, with both us and our partners. I think everyone is, is used to talking about, uh, supply chain. And whenever we think about supply chain, finding ways to save these companies money so it can be passed along to the consumer is really, really good. Um, because I mean, shipping costs are up, just everything, everything is up. So I'm all, I'm all for if you, you know, if you're a good driver out there, why not get rewarded for it? Pay less on the insurance. Don't charge the consumer as much. I think that's a great thing. So let's talk about distribution. So you, you're an MGA. How are you finding your customers? Yeah, so Fairmatic was born and started writing business. We have written most of our business through wholesale and retail agents. But if you think about our sort of value proposition, we don't feel like we're necessarily limited to that. So we feel like we could have you know great results and have had a lot of interest from you know different partnership opportunities and our you know technology. It integrates beautifully into sort of other applications. So we have, I think, really an unlimited opportunity in terms of how we distribute our product over time. What do you mean integrates beautifully into other applications? So one, one version of our product is an SDK that we can put into another application. So for example, if you were an application that managed, offered fleet management capabilities. Kind of like in, embedded insurance into there? Yeah, you could embed our SDK into your technology and we could offer insurance to those customers that that platform is already um, working with that would be interested in adding an insurance element to their their offering. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that agents are really interested in your product because of its unique nature. Right. Yeah, to, definitely. to be able to to be able to go to their customers and say, well, you know, if you're willing to do the work, here's a way to save money. Yeah, you'll yeah. save money. I think, you know, agents worked with agents for a long time. And I think we check a lot of boxes for them about things that get them excited. So one is we are different uh, and to have a different option to bring to the table um, that's new and innovative to their customers. I think they always find value in. Mm -hmm. And then two, um, we offer a pretty delightful experience at the gate in terms of our sort of quoting experience that we are able to partner with them on. And so if you, you know, make it easy for, for agents and you offer them something different, that is what they see as valuable to bring to their clients. I think they get really excited about us. If you're a commercial enterprise, you, you have a lot of different insurances because typically you're not just like your fleet businesses. They have a fleet, which is supporting whatever their core business is. 
Uh, some companies, their core business is their fleet, right? Is delivery, but, but others, you know, I have trucks because I'm baked bread and it needs to get delivered around. So is it a problem that you are just auto insurance that you're not bundled with other uh, commercial lines that, that are necessary for them to, to, to carry? Yeah, no, great question. We haven't seen that yet at all. I think if you sort of put yourself in the buying, you know, in the shoes of the buyer, they're tending to, you know, by and large, not one commercial enterprise is getting all lines of insurance from one insurance company. Um, so, you know, having a, a different insurance carrier um, for specialized lines of insurance or that meet a particular need, um, I don't think feels feels out of the ordinary. And so when you sort of look at what the value that Fairmount brings to the equation. Um, I think that we haven't seen that, you know, being a, a model line uh, provider be an issue at all. Mm-hmm. Are, and are you working with companies like a, a like a bold penguin type that, uh, that that are, you know, aggregating lots of different kind of like uh, a marketplace? Yeah. Yeah, we, we are either working with or in the process of working with, I think, just about other every single type of distribution um, out there. So I think, like I said before, I think, you know, one of the benefits of being a, a startup is we've got a pretty advanced and easy sort of way of doing business to start with and are very much looking for and, you know, uh, additional ways of distribution. Unfortunately, you have claims. And you have to deal with claims. Tell us a little bit about how your claim uh, experience or process is any different as a result of the unique nature of your company. Yeah, I think we actually have a ton to offer in this space. So claims, uh, commercial auto claims, you know, just look at the results um, over the last couple of years. And and like I said earlier, it's a, you know, there's significant limits out there on commercial auto insurance and um, there can be significant, you know, events that happen and, uh, you know, all kinds of vehicles to get repaired and things get, get complicated quickly. That being said, I think our product is, you know, one of the places I think it's most exciting and most differentiated is in the claim space. So a couple of things. One, our customers can have their driver from the immediate point of incident electronically report that something happened. So they open up our app, click of a button. There's already information about the policy, the vehicle, the, you know, everything that you need to know at first report. And they can get that to their fleet manager, um, just, just like that. And so that I think is, is the sort of capability that really helps us uh, shorten the report time and make things really, really, really easy for our customers. Um, and then from there, you see the benefits continue. Um, we are able to leverage our telematics data as we're evaluating claims. And so understand what was going on um, on the road and, and at the time of event. And that allows us to really inform um, how we think about the claim um, and, and, and sort of what uh, what exposures there, what happened, and and really get a good understanding to to drive to really high quality claims management. That's yeah. Nice. I mean, you you have all this data. Can you tell whose fault it was? So I think on any on <laughs> on any individual claim, the job of an adjuster is to sort of you know figure out what happened, uh, understand uh, and and manage to the to the you know, most accurate uh, outcome for that, that individual claim. And what our telematics data provides is this really, really useful set of information sure. as input put to that evaluation. Um, and it's something that we're able to give to claims adjusters that, that other, other companies are not. Yeah, sure. I think so. I, I would think so. So we want to talk about you. That's right, because you're a big bill. Right. I mean, we know insurance, we know, we know tech companies who have gone out and gotten low level people and said, you're going to run my insurance vertical here. But Fairmatic went out and said, let's get this really, really big deal person, extremely smart, been in the industry a long time. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool, right? Yeah, I think you're calling me a seasoned insurance person. (laughs) I think very talented insurance person. I have uh, been in the industry for a couple of decades, had the opportunity to 
to, to have, you know, roles in all different functions with respect to commercial insurance from operations to distribution and underwriting and, um, you know, big, big, large carriers, you know, big both, names, yeah, big names, mutual and public. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, I got some seasoning. You got some seasoning in you. I mean, I guess, is that what Jonathan and the group are going after? Were they going after uh, somebody who had been around and had done different things? Is that what they were looking for? I think even early on. So I've been at Formatic for coming up on a year. And I think if I were to sort of put myself in Jonathan's shoes and speak for him, that he really, really saw significant opportunity for Fairmatic. And what he wanted to do was over invest in sort of leadership. And we had a fabulous leadership team with a ton of experience. And to your point, more experience than you would think at a, a stage company that like the early stage company that we are. Right. But really, that was intentional to say, let's not build this for sort of the next round. Let's build this for sustainable, profitable growth that we think this thing is going to to last a long time. And so he he really, I think, invested in and said, I want to make a big investment in in bringing in the right talent that that can uh, help you know be around for a while and see us through um, some significant growth. Has it been difficult? going from these well-established large companies to a startup. Tell, tell me a little bit about the the differences or, or how that felt. Yeah, sure. I think um, I'm not totally sure I ever fit the mold of executive at a large <laughs> insurance company. So the, the uh, I think we could start with that. I would say the switch has been extraordinarily easy. And there's, there's probably two things that stick out for me. One of them that, that I don't think I thought about, um, but has been pretty different for me is if you think about being successful in driving change and delivering results at a big company, big companies have processes, systems, ways of working that have been built for like and, and, and optimized for a hundred years. And it has delivered like I've worked at Allstate, Liberty Mutual. They're both phenomenally managed companies. Right. And though that sort of infrastructure has served them really, really, really well, as evidenced by their, you know, history's results. But what I sort of, in retrospect, I think, realize is sort of one of the ways that you can be a really good change agent at a big company is figuring out what things that you should break. So that where should you say, hey, just because we did that before doesn't mean we should do it that way in the future. And I think I got good good at figuring out this is the right place to take risk. This is what we should sort of say, nope, I'm going to break that and 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 we're going to do things differently in the future. And sort of get to Fairmatic and there's nothing to break. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my God, I'm in the seat of a builder. Right. And uh, I did sit back and say, wow, this is different. And I, I have just enjoyed so much thinking about what I want to build Good. instead of what I need to break. And so that's been a hugely just a, a total like lens or, you know, a change in the way, like I think about leading or running the business that, that I might not have thought of before I left, if that makes sense. It does. So, totally. Um, and then the second bit is I do think um, I have a little bit of insure tech startup more in my DNA. So I mentioned that I um, I am not necessarily what you would think of as out of the book of old insurance exec. Uh, but, you know, some of that is I, you know, was... I grew up in the Bay Area, actually, in the Silicon Valley in the 80s and early 90s. I like to say when guys really were in garages. <laughs> and uh, my parents both grew up um, there as well, raised their family. And my mom um, founded her own business there and she grew it. And my dad eventually went to work there. And I grew up as you know part of a small business family uh, in Silicon Valley. And I think you learn a lot about what that yeah. means. And, and it just, it feels extremely natural in mm -hmm. a startup type environment mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. well, I, I'm very interested in that kind of phenomena. I have that with my own children where they've kind of gone down a path in their careers that are not unlike mine and, and they're better than me. But I think that they also, you just, you just, you're surrounded by it. It's easier to understand it. it you speak the language, you understand what's going on because you watched your parents do it. All right. 
Yeah. And that came to me a little later, right? I mean, I did, I have had a you know long career in big insurance businesses and I'm one of those people that actually chose insurance. Like I sat down and said, this is where I want to work, which I know is a little So you're the other one. I'm the I, other I, I know one. there's yeah. two. You're the but, Yeah. 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 Um, uh-huh. And so I, I think I've, I feel more connected to sort of what I learned and felt growing up in my time at Fairmatic than I ever have. It feels more, very much like a coming home to your point. And mm-hmm. I always say like, I got, my quantity of work from my mom and my quality of work from my dad cool. <laughs> and hopefully together better, but they're both pretty awesome. So I'm not cool. sure about that. Because of the seven people that listen to this episode, you know, there'll be two of them. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not sure how excited about insurance they are. <laughs> well, I'm sure they're excited about you. So like we've said, you know, commercial autos, an enormous market. I mean, I, I can't imagine bazillions of dollars, billions and billions, billions, of course, even around the world. Right. Uh, do you guys move on from that and add other things or is it too early to talk about that? Yeah, we're pretty, pretty focused on, um, making sure we have like, to your point, a ton of runway in the commercial auto space. Um, and we feel like it's, you know, what we know and do really well and are really focused on, um, sustainable, profitable growth and feel like, um, that's like focus is critical to us now. Um, and so probably too early. As we started at the top, big fans of Jonathan. And when we had him on the first time, so we do the episode and we finish and Lee and I are just like, God, who is this guy? Who is this right? person that we didn't even know existed? And he has just he's changed he's the world. Right? Brilliant. Right. Had his hands intimately had his hands in huge world changing moments. Yeah. Right. And now he's doing this car thing. With- yeah. But then decides. Then decides he's like, "Hey, I've got this this new drive, this new passion. I've got to I've got to fix I've got to fix this problem." And and he did it. I mean, like yeah. like he's going out to do it. I think that is so yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, little did we know when we first talked to him that there was this fairmatic thing going on in the background. We didn't know. So it, now it all kind of makes perfect now sense. Now we are de-stealthed. Now and you're you know. de-stealthed. You were so <laughs> stealth. We had no idea. <laughs> Now you're de-stealth. And so what are you guys doing? I mean, how are you announcing it to the world or, but, but you've been selling the product. It's been on the market. So, I mean, what's the difference now? Yeah, we've been selling the product. It's been on the market. We, you know, work with a ton of different distribution partners already have a great installed customer base. Um, And so when we de-stealthed and um, sort of announced our series A raise, um, it was much more about sort of sharing or letting the world in on what's been going on at Fairmatic. And, um, and so it's, it's much more about sort of telling our story. When I think about what's uh, sort of up next for a Fairmatic, we're really looking to continue to grow the team. We're looking to hire, we're expanding our, um, our presence, uh, particularly technology teams in both Tel Aviv and, and India. So you're going to see a lot of hiring from us um, over the coming couple of quarters as we look to continue to accelerate our growth and just continue doing what we've been doing and making sure we are growing, but in a very, very smart way. So I think we're trying to learn a lot of lessons um, from the past. So the old sort of lose-lose of the original incumbents where the buying experience of insurance was, you know, difficult and cumbersome and black, black box pricing felt unfair and sort of customers were overpaying to the InsureTech 1.0 where, um, you know, companies came in, really improved the buying experience, um, were able to give customers more competitive pricing and it felt like a real win for, for, for customers. But have we seen play out, not necessarily sustainable for the companies. And so really trying to make sure we turn it into that win-win where we offer the customer tremendous value uh, and the, you know, safest fleets are able to save on insurance and control their costs. Um, and then in turn, we're able to, to profitably grow. And again, most importantly, um, out of that win-win is this additional benefit that we're making roads across the U.S. safer. And I know we started with that and it feels like a, you know, a great connection to make again. And uh, I think it's a, such an important part of our business. It's such an important part of Jonathan's story um, and how we got founded. Uh, and I think it just, it, it's a really great, great 
great way to feel. I've always felt good about insurance. I love uh, an industry where you're here for your customers and their their moment of need and you're able to deliver for them. Um, but to be able to do not just that, but also help make roads safer just feels feels like, you know, a really, really good reason to come into work every day. For, for those of you, uh, well, all of you in the audience, it took a couple of times. It did. But we got it done. So worth it. And, so worth it. To- totally. Compl- we, we forced, uh, we forced Jamie to go into a phone booth. <laughs> so, so what you, what you all don't see right now is that she's in a phone booth in, uh, it's somewhere in Chicago land. And, mm-hmm. um, uh, we thank you so much for being with us. A, a really wonderful pleasure and such an exciting business. Thank you so much for having me. It was great and um, really appreciate the opportunity to tell our Fairmatic story. It was great. Thank you, Jamie. Thanks, you. And come back again. we Will do. I never get tired of being uh, the, of the privilege of being able to talk to all these wide variety of people who are involved in innovative new ideas which is pretty much every single podcast we do right I, and today, I think yeah and here we are another not a little thing but but a big thing and yeah. just terrific each podcast opens my mind to how smart our industry is right we have so many creative people out there and we're blessed to get to talk to these people. You know, once a week, we get to find a new person to to open them up, to learn what they're doing, to learn how their mind works. I think that's the best part of this podcast is getting mm-hmm. to find these new amazing people and talk to. Right, right. And so we're, we're so grateful to Chantal and everybody at Fairmatic. Yeah. Who enabled Jamie to be here today and... So grateful to Jamie for sharing absolutely such wonderful uh, information and insights, uh, both about her company and herself. And yeah. um, and we thank you, our listeners. Yeah, especially Jamie's mother and father. Yes. Um, thanks for listening to the podcast. In thank advance. you so much. And thank you to our intrepid production staff. And until next time, we'll say. Goodbye, everybody.